<laughs> Snowflake! Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. If you're feeling charitable, please smash the subscribe button and the like button and follow me over on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Welcome to Big Mouth and I'm going to be really open with you people. I don't read comic books, but I love storytelling. I love movies and I love TV drama and I'm a writer. I love coming up with stories and ideas and we are really, really in a situation in this industry where I just don't know where to turn, where the culture war is getting deeper and deeper and the reactions are getting more aggressive and the creatives are getting even more um, aggressive with their creations. So let's talk about Snowflake and these new um, characters from Marvel. Meet Snowflake, Marvel's first non-binary superhero. Wow. Do you know, I'll be honest as well, I don't even really know what non-binary means. I think it means you don't actually have a gender, right? An agenda? No, a gender. A gender, right? Marvel Comics has revealed the Ruth roster for the de debut of the New Warriors reboot. But the initial response to the new team was mixed. We praise for introducing Marvel's first non-binary superhero, but also widespread, understandable criticism lobbed against the character's name and appearance. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just hilarious. And I want to explain, I want to read this um, Screen Rant article so we all understand what we're talking about. Because I'm sure people watching this video don't know much about what's going on here. The new team of upcoming New Warrior reboot by Daniel Kibblesmith and Luciano Vecchio is combining old characters with brand new ones, featuring new creations with names like Be Negative, Screen Time and Trailblazer. But there is no question that the character generated the most discussion. Really? Only following the reveal is actually the team's new set of twins, Snowflake and Safe Space. Ah! The psychic twins have differing powers, as Snowflake can generate sharp snowflake-like shurikens, while Safe Space can create defensive barriers. Uh, get it? Uh, where are we? Snowflake was even introduced as non-binary, a term used to identify individuals who don't identify as either male or female. While the inclusion of non-binary character represents much needed progress and representation from Marvel. The Snowflake moniker, along with the character's costume, has been criticized. Making, Lo Lo making Loki gender fluid was a brilliant move. But where that was handled well with care, Snowflake is facing accusations of unearned satire. While they've been better in recent years, Marvel's not exactly at the forefront of representation. Oh, how dare they? Uh, actually, actually, they are. And that's the problem. Especially in the movies where the MCU's first openly gay character after more than 20 plus movies was represented by a meaningless throwaway line. The upcoming Eternals movie will feature the first gay lead in a Marvel movie. However, in the comics, the inclusion of a non-binary character represents a major stepping stone when it comes to accurately representing the world outside your window. But making that step, naming such progressive characters Snowflake, which has become a derogatory term used to call someone sensitive or worse, is a rough, a rough way to start. The same goes for Snowflake's twin safe space, another term often used to mock those seeking to support minorities of any kind by offering environments and communities free from prejudice. It's possible, even likely, Kibble Smith and Vecchio have cooked up a meaningful storyline that explains the reasoning behind those names. But at first glance, it's baffling to see comic book fans, especially those who identify as non-binary, should be excited to see Marvel introduce a non-binary superhero for the first time. Instead, seeing the character branded Snowflake leaves the legitimate conclusion that the name like the character is meant to be something of a joke. And with so little else known, perhaps it is. 
But when dealing with topics relating to identity, especially when making history with a first character, it's a big deal to get it right. Unfortunately, that's not the case when it comes to New Warriors, newest hero. Hopefully, Snowflake can rise above the initial first impression. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I'm going to look for the video and I'm going to come back very shortly. So let's give this a bit of a read. And there's some character descriptions here. And they're fucking hilarious. Right. A meme-obsessed super teen whose brain became overconnected to the internet after becoming exposed to his grandfather's experiment, Internet Gas. Now he can see augmented reality and real-time maps and can instantly Google any fact. Does this make him effectively a genius? He sure acts like it does. Now let's look at the political connotations to this. Now I want to go to the top bit because this is a really derogative description if you look deeper into it. So, a meme-obsessed super teen whose brain became connected to the internet after becoming exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas. So, the grandfather, in other words, is the toxic male who exposes the child to his masculine um, toxicity, right? That's the whole point here. That's the whole point here. You don't know that just by reading this description. So already we know what's going on here. So then we have we have Trailblazer, a regular kid scooped up into the world of teenage superhero. Her magic backpack is actually a pocket dimension with seemingly infinite space from which she can pull out useful or random objects. It's not always under her control. She claims to get her power from God, but not the God you're thinking of. Mm, I wonder what that can mean. So, look, what can I say? It's just, look, I mean, look, this is what we're looking at, if you can see it. It's, listen, it is what you think it is. It's a bunch of SJWs trying to rewrite comics. And people are very upset about this. Now, that article I read to you was interesting in terms of them saying everyone's applauding the representation because of the non-binary inclusion. No, 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 no. Nobody cares. You, you know, people in the comic industry, in the movie industry, in the entertainment industry think we all want to be represented. Right. Here's me, Mick, brought up in England, speaks English, parents Greek Cypriot, born and bred in Cyprus. Where am I ever represented? But look, but look, look who's being represented. A non-binary person of colour, right? Non-binary because they scream the loudest about being represented. A person of colour because people of colour scream loud enough about being represented. Us Greek Cypriots. I've never seen a Greek Cypriot Superman. Superman's my favourite superhero, right? Do I feel less related to him because he's not a damn Greek Cypriot? No, because it's about the character. He, Superman represented my emotions as a young man. A, a young man who was born in the UK, but that had parents from another country. So when we used to go on holiday here in Cyprus, which is where I live now, they treated me as an English person. So when I used to live in England, I was called a foreigner and told to go back to my country because I had this complexion, right? So I always felt an outsider. I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. And as a young man, I quickly renounced nationality. It meant nothing to me. Religion, nationality, because I never felt I belonged to any damn nationality. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I just see myself as a regular, individual, human being, right? Never represented. But again, non-binary, person of colour is represented, right? Because they have the loudest mouths. People of colour will tell you that they're not represented. They are one of the most represented um, demographics, right, in America, in Hollywood, in ent the entertainment industry in the UK. But they will still say they're underrepresented, underrepresented. So they will bitch and bitch and moan and moan and they will get more and more representation. Non-binary, identifying as neither a man or a woman, 
I don't care. I don't care. I literally don't have an opinion about the LBGTQ community. I look at people as individuals and I value you for your personality, your heart and your soul. I don't care what you represent. I don't care if you're a person of colour, a Polish person, a Swedish person, right? I don't care. That's not important to me. And I believe this is not important to most sane people. When most people pick up a comic book or watch a film or watch a TV drama or watch a quiz show, they don't care about the sexuality, the gender or the demographic uh, from where someone's from or what colour they are. Most people, sane people, don't care whether they're men, women or binary. Normal sane people don't care about this. But it's the insane that's being represented here. So good storytelling, great character development is thrown away. So the people with the biggest gobs can be represented. But people like me, Anglo Greek Cypriots, will never be represented because we're quiet people. We don't mind not being represented because we understand every single culture and demo can't be represented. It is impossible, right? So we have become and it's worse ever since you know who has become president or you know who's become prime minister or Brexit. This culture war goes on and on and on. And who suffers really? Who's really suffering in all of this? The art of storytelling has been unharnessed. Like someone thrown out of a plane, jettisoned out of a plane without a parachute. We don't need good stories, right? We've seen it in Doctor Who with the casting of Jodie Whittaker. They had a thousand females they could have cast if they wanted a female. And they got the most blandest, uninteresting actor who's never led anything in her life. But she's a woman. She identifies as a woman. This is representation. And that's all that matters. So Doctor Who, they've killed Doctor Who because they literally thought if we put someone in a rainbow top, right, that's all we need to do. She's representing the LBGTQ um, rainbow. That's all that matters. And she's a woman. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. So they, they took Doctor Who. They put the character out of a plane without a parachute. They don't care. All they care about is making their political points. And this is how you kill an industry. We have the coronavirus now that's killing everything, right? Everything's closing down. When these people come back to make more films, more comics, they're going to have to make a decision here because they would, they are losing billion, literally billions of dollars a picture, a, a TV show or anything else, right? That's why they're releasing stuff on demand. They're going to have to make a decision, politics or business. What is it going to be? Because they can't afford to be putting out these messages anymore. I want to know what you think. Please comment down below. Um, I just want to see the most talented people and the best stories represented. That's the representation I want to see. I don't want a feminist like Phoebe Waller-Bridge writing a Bond movie, right? And creating um, the 007 she thinks should be out there politically, right? That's why Bond's a mess. That's why it's been delayed till November, right? Actually given a date as well. Amazing. Amazing. Simply amazing where we are in this industry now. But it continues. But we are just called toxic males, just screaming from our mother's loft, right? That's all we are. We don't matter. What we want doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that every time I watch a TV show or a film, men are being put down. That doesn't matter. That's not good storytelling, by the way. That's not inclusive because you're putting down a demographic. It's not cool. It's hateful. And extremism, whether it's left or right, is a damaging thing. And this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing in the entertainment industry now, in the comic industry. They are taking uh, leftist extremism and killing an art form. They have killed an art form. And luckily, I've got thousands of Blu-rays in there. I've got thousands of stuff on my Prime video. I can watch anything I want, stuff that I enjoy, stuff with talent. If a show like Smallville that started now on the CW, we'd have dozens of men hate. We, You know, Lo Lois Lane or Chloe or Lana couldn't be saved by Clark because he's a man and she's strong and she doesn't need saving, right? We couldn't have any of that. So what's the point of Superman anymore if you can't ever save Lois Lane? I want her to be strong. I want her to be independent. But, you know, Superman has to freaking well save someone, right? Can he only just save men, right? 
what is this? Will the next Superman be non-binary? How deep and how far will we will, will we go and stretch to represent the people with the biggest mouths? And then you talk about representation and someone like me, someone with Greek Cypriot parents, right, who felt he never belonged to any culture or religion because he was rejected by all of them, will never be represented. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. Share the video so people can know how we actually feel. I'm a half decent human being, a compassionate human being. Show people the point we're making is not about racism or homophobia, right? Or transphobia or any of that. It's about taking an art form and flushing it down the toilet. Thank you very much. I'll be back with more videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Back soon. And stay indoors for now. You don't want to catch that disease now, do you?